Shalom, saints of God. Uh, welcome again to day five of our devotions this week. Thank you so much that you could join me every day uh, as we have looked into this subject of sustaining momentum in adversity. God bless you so much for giving me the opportunity to minister to you the word of God. It's blessed me as well. Every day God is speaking to me even as we share from his word. My name is Herman Modime and I'm grateful to God for your being here today. Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. The Bible says, but none of these things, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I might finish, I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Friends, we have a race to run. We have a race. We are on a journey. There used to be an advert on TV some years ago. I think they were advertising a vehicle and they used to say, um, life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. I know journeys are supposed to be enjoyed. You know, road trips are supposed to be enjoyed. A quick dash to your rural areas, to your shags, is supposed to be memorable, joyous, you know, even though it may be a long distance. It's supposed to be memorable. But somehow, life is such that in, in all the journeys we undertake on this earth, sometimes we, we, we hit some bumps on, along the way. You know, we, we find traffic jams, we find all manner of inconveniences. And, and sometimes our journey is cut short, sometimes it is delayed, sometimes it is just um, uh, buffeted by, by, by maybe a road accident or, or, or it is some bad thing. But Paul says this, in regard to the call of God upon his life, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. He, he served the Lord with all humility, but with many tears and trials that happened to him in different places by the plotting of the Jews. Paul's ministry over the years was not an easy ministry to do. I mean, when you read the letters of Paul, Sometimes he doesn't talk so much in detail about what he went through, but he went through stuff. He went through stuff. Life is a journey. Life is a journey. Enjoy that ride. Even though it has a lot of adversities, he comes to this conclusion, even as he, he addresses the elders from Ephesus, he says, you, you know, you know how, how, verse 20, how I kept back nothing from you that was helpful but I proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly from house to house, all right? Testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus. And see now I go bound, I, bound in, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. But he knows stuff could happen, bad stuff, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city saying that chains and tribulations await me. In this world, ours may not be chains. It may not be persecution for our faith, but there's adversity awaiting us. Every single day we are awake. Our enemy is on a mission daily. He's dedicated to that mission, to steal, to kill, to destroy. Adversity awaits us. But Paul says, none of these things move me. We must continue to do life. We must continue to run this race. We must continue to attend to the things that God has assigned to us. We must be at our places of assignment. We must be at the place where we, we, we are working, you know, whatever your, hand, your hands find to do, the Bible says, do it with all diligence. Do it with all diligence. Give it everything you have got. Everything. I submit to us this morning, Adversity is not an excuse to surrender. I submit to us, no matter how intense the warfare is against you, how challenging issues life may be, it is not your opportunity to check out. It is not your opportunity to surrender and say, you know what, it's never that serious. We are done here. I'm out of here. We are not. The other day, someone asked me a question in Bible study and said, 
there's a couple, let's just say there's a couple who were so madly in love. They got married, you know, grand wedding. They, they, I mean, they, they, they spent the money. They, 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 it was a big thing. But over the years, three, four years down the road, the fires died out. The lights went out. The excitement was no more. There was nothing appealing, attractive about each other, about their union. And so, living in the days that we live in, they sat down. They were amicable about it. They sat down and they made the decision, you know, since our marriage has expired, you know, the dupe, you know, used by date has come. That's why there's no more fire, there's no more fireworks, there's no more excitement, no more conversation between us as we used to have, you know. Isn't this an opportunity for us, a, a good time for us to file for divorce? And sadly they did. They separated, went their separate ways, you know. And, and, and when the time came, they, they got their divorce, you know, citing irreconcilable differences and moved on. Because from where they were both seated, the grass is always greener for neighbor, you know. The neighbor's grass is always greener. That's what they did. Why am I sharing this? I'm sharing this because marriages are under attack. They always have been. But it's like we are paying more attention to it now because we are confined to one space for many hours and we are not used to that. And so maybe, maybe the, 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 the problems between husbands and wives have become more pronounced because now uh, we are spending 24 hours together whereas we just used to live in the morning, go our separate ways, pursuing our career paths, coming back in the evening, uh, seeing each other for an hour or two or three and then falling asleep and you know, but now you, you, you are together for all this time and suddenly couples are beginning to act weird, you know. It's like these problems are new, they are not new, it's just that we have opportunity now to actually notice things we barely notice. Parents are fed up with their children. The same children they called blessings, you know. We are blessed to have a son, we are blessed to have a daughter. Suddenly children have become problematic, quote unquote, in their lives. Do you know what the Lord has assigned you to do, to be in this life? Do you know your place of assignment? Whether you're a minister of the gospel of grace like some of us are, whether you're a father, a mother, a husband, a wife, a citizen of this wonderful nation, whatever place of assignment, perhaps you're a, in, you're a business person, perhaps you're an influence in the marketplace, perhaps you are an employee or employer. There's nothing about your assignment that God said it's going to be easy. There's nothing about it. In fact, everything on this side of eternity is anti-Christian. This world is not Christian friendly. Let's deal with it. I'm sorry if I sound tough today. Let's deal with it. There's nothing Christian friendly in the world we live in. But there's nothing impossible to them that are called by his name. There is nothing that cannot be executed by a child of God, which God has given to you to execute. In the words of Paul again, he says, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself. And here's the reason why. So that I may finish my race. This race we must finish. This walk we must finish. And so my, my word to us today as we come to a close of this week's devotions is this. Keep moving. It is not time to stop. It is not time to check out. It is not time to, to sit there and be disappointed and, and lament about the problems. It is time to keep moving. Remember, do, do you remember when the Israelites were brought out of Egypt by God? Their journey had barely started. When they came and found the way blocked by the Red Sea, when they turned to look behind them, they saw that the Egyptians had changed their minds about them and they were in hot pursuit of them. 
And they began to cry out to Moses and say, Moses, is this not what we told you? Leave us alone, oh. Leave us alone, man of God. This thing you are telling us, oh, freedom, freedom has come. Leave us alone. But Moses said, no, God sent me here to bring you out. So Moses, why has God not made a way? Look, look, Pharaoh and his people are coming after us. How are we supposed to deal with this? When Moses cries out to God, God says to him one thing. Moses, tell the people that they may go forward. Tell the people to go forward. Listen, God is saying to go forward even before he has parted the Red Sea. God is saying move forward even before he has provided a bridge or ferries or, you know, to, to get the people across. Tell the people to go forward. Friends, the word of God to us today, keep moving. Go forward. You cannot, you cannot be shouting. You cannot be lamenting. You cannot be screaming at the top of your voice. You cannot, be, you cannot be throwing tantrums because the Egyptians are after you and there's a Red Sea before you and you know, I need to escape. Go forward, God said. Go forward. Go forward. Tell the people to go forward. This is the one thing we must be keen to do in times of adversity. Move forward. It is not a time, it is not a time for us, friends, to be, to be doing all those things I've talked about at, at the risk of repeating myself. It is not that time, friends. It is time to move forward because we can. God leading us, we can. We may not see the way out. We may not see the way out. We may not see the way out. But there is a way out that God always provides for his people. There's always a way out. There's always a way out, ladies and gentlemen. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, as I conclude, the Bible says this, no temptation. That word in the Greek is a word that means temptations as we know them. It means a test. It means a trial. Perismos. It says no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God, but God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tested, to be tried, to be tempted beyond what you are able to deal with. I'm adding my own words here and there, paraphrasing. But with the temptation, he will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. There is nothing you're going through except such as is common to man. I know it's hard. I know it's painful. I know it's been there for quite a while, but God is faithful. And with whatever you're going through, if you will lift up your eyes to him, cry to him, call upon his name, he will show you the way of escape that he has planned for you. What a friend we have in Jesus. Friends, no one who puts their faith in Jesus Christ will be ashamed. No one who trusts in the Lord will ever be disgraced. This is the word of the Lord to us. Keep moving. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for encouraging us. Thank you, Father, for straightening us out. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Thank you, Lord, for correcting us. Thank you, Lord, for rebuking us. Thank you, Father, for instructing us in righteousness so that we can be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Father, we are able with you, Lord, enabling us, empowering us with your awesome leadership. Father, we are able. And I commend us to your word of grace that is able to build us up. And I place us, Father, into your loving arms, O Lord. There is nothing impossible to them that believe. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you. Thank you, Lord. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a lovely weekend. Have a Christ-centered weekend. Whatever you do, whatever is going on in your life, let nothing of those things move you. God bless you. Amen.